In today's video, I'll be spending 200 days in Grounded. This video will be a follow-up to the first 100 days. I already explained everything in the first 100 days, so go watch that and then come back to this video. I also have to mention that 99.7% of you guys are not subscribed. Guys, what are you doing? Hit the subscribe button, come on. So if you like today's video, make sure you subscribe and it's totally free and you can always unsubscribe later. And with that being said, let's get right into the 200 days. I started day 101 by respawning back at the start. When I woke up, I had all my armor and weapons back. So I equipped all my armor and I also got this little pop-up saying that all my milk molars were refunded. This didn't mean I had to go find them again, I already had all the milk molars, I was just gonna need to respend them. And I also got the information that my base was still here, so the first thing I did was go back to my base. With the new 1.0 update, that also meant I was gonna need to redo all the quests and labs. This also meant I had to reactivate the lasers to trigger the explosive. I helped Burgle back up and I also spent all my milk molars. I was looking at the new weapons that they added and the first thing I saw was a tier 3 crossbow. I knew I wanted this right away because the crossbow was one of the most used items that I used in the 100 days. I did get flack in the comments for using the bow so much, but um, what you gonna do? I mean, the bow is super useful. At night, I went over to the new area that they added in the 1.0 release, and there were fire ants. Basically, just the same version of the normal ant, just a little bit stronger, so it wasn't a problem dealing with it. But my main reason for coming over here was to get pinecone parts. Pinecone parts are required for the crossbow. And while I was collecting more pinecone parts, I got attacked by a bunch of ticks. And they pretty quickly killed me. At the early morning of day 102, I got some Supreme Quartzite. Now, Quartzite replaces Tough Nuggets, and Marble replaces Style Nuggets. They pretty much do the exact same thing, it's just a different name. So, it might be kind of confusing, but I'm sure you'll get it later on the video. I also went down to the Fire Ant Hill to get even more Quartzite. With the Fire Ants that I killed, I created a level 3 shield. The entire 100 days, I was using a level 2 shield, and I was finally able to upgrade to a level 3. The next thing I did was I went across the pond to make a little stairway to get up to the new areas. Before, I would have to go all the way over to the charcoal grill and then run all the way back to the new areas, but with this, it would be a lot easier. I went back to the fire and hell to get some more Supreme Quartzite, and I also got Rust. Rust is extremely easy to find. All you have to do is go over by the toolbox and just break some random nuts and bolts and you'll easily get it. You do need a tier 3 hammer, which I guess is the hardest part of getting it, but Rust is absolutely everywhere, so it should not be an issue. Rust is used to make the crossbow, and I also repaired some of my armor with repair glue. I then continued to kill as many ox beetles as I possibly could, and by the end of the day, I was finally able to craft the crossbow, and I also spent some milk molars. Day 103, I plugged up the canister with gum. Now I wouldn't have to use a gas mask whenever I went to the haze area, and I super easily killed the ladybug down there. The first time I went to the haze lab, it was a lot harder to kill the ladybug, but now with full gear, it was it was an absolute walk in the park. I used the little hand scanner thing, I opened up the door and got the super chip. There were also three brat bursts in there, so that was kind of nice. Day 104, I went over to the hedge to complete the hedge lab. I went around collecting all the pieces of the password. It was very easy, I just entered in the password, I had the super chip, and returned it to Burgle. Day 105, I went to the stump lab. And of course, I forgot to record it, so that was my bad. Next, I would use a bunch of quartzite and upgrade my crossbow. Next, I crafted mighty globs. The mighty globs are used to get to the higher levels of the crossbow, and I now realized that the ox bow was going to be a lot stronger, so I replaced my old bow. And I also quickly just went down to the sandbox, but it doesn't really make any sense because I haven't killed the assistant manager, so um, yeah, I don't know how I still have the key card, but I guess I just do. Next, I went by this little pink car thing, and it had a bunch of sturdy quartzite, which was pretty nice, as well as a milk molar. In a pipe, I found some supreme marble, and I also found some gunpowder in these little cap things. Day 106, I killed an ox beetle and got some more supreme marble, and I forgot that I didn't have a dandelion, so I just fell to my death. Next, I tried to get a bunch more milk molars and spend them on the new upgrades. They updated the upgrades, so instead of having thirst and hunger, you just have thirst hunger uh if that makes sense so hunger and thirst were two separate categories now they're just combined next i went over to this plastic bottle that had a bunch of milk molars in it it's one of the easiest ways to get a bunch of milk molars i thought it was gonna be hard but really all you have to do is get a tier 3 axe chop through these little vine things and you're easily able to get them and after i got them i spent them all i killed another ox beetle by well cheesing it of course what else would i do uh but i guess in return i got killed by roly poly so i think that uh you know counteracts it day 108 i got assaulted by a bunch of mosquitoes so that was uh interesting and i got some more milk molars i went to the bike over by the rad stones from the previous 100 days and i went over by the charcoal grill to get another milk molar and I also went back to the termite den. The termite den had a new chip. This chip would be very important. It means you can now craft staffs. So you can craft like magic staffs. If you guys ever played Origins, I know my audience is like five years old, so maybe not. But um, yeah, Origins, one of the best Call of Duty zombies map. I'm, I'm going off just randomly, but it's, it's staffs like that. Thankfully to one of the comments in the last video, I knew where the Coltana was. It's by the charcoal grill and it's this flaming sword in the middle of a rock. 
The problem was if I got anywhere close to it, I would sizzle and easily die. The problem was it was too hot, so I couldn't get close to it. I was gonna need my antlion armor, but for now, I just didn't have it on me. But I would eventually come back here. After that, I returned the chip to Virgo, and I was now able to unlock the staffs. Day 109, I went to the sandbox to get some spicy candies. This was gonna be used to make spicy globs, which is how I would make the spicy staff. I eventually crafted the staff, and I also upgraded it. Not only did the staff look really cool, it also did a ton of damage. I used it on the black ox beetle, and it does insane damage. Day 110, I went down to the black ant hill and killed the assistant manager. I was really surprised about how easy it was. I mean, obviously, I have the best stuff in the game, but even with the best stuff, I was surprised how easily I was able to kill him. And before I left, I got the black ant super chip. I went down to the pond, I activated all three switches, and was able to get the super chip. I then turned the super chip into burgle, and I also got a couple more milk molars, but more importantly, I went down to the stump lab. It wasn't very hard to get the chip in there. All I had to do was activate a computer. You have to do a little bit of weird jumping, but um, otherwise, yeah, it wasn't that hard. I got the chip, and I was good to go. And I guess the last thing to mention is that I got a mega milk molar on the way out. Day 111, I killed a black ox beetle and got three milk molars in total. Day 112, I was trying to get the tick manichuity. <laughs> Uh, I don't know how to say it, but I tried to get that because I thought it was the level 3 dagger, which it doesn't say dagger in it, but it has the same stats of the dagger, so I was thinking it was the new dagger. I don't really know why I thought that, but uh, I just did. I crafted it and was severely disappointed when I was not able to get the resources that I need, which is the pawn moss. Pawn moss is how you make the sour staff, which actually has a lot better stats than the spicy staff, which eventually later I would learn that the spicy staff has the best stats. I feel like I'm going on, like, too much of a tangent here, but, um, I really just got scammed out of that dagger. And for the rest of the day, I was just snoozing, pretty much. That was about it. I started day 113 trying to get some might fuzz as well as getting clay. I was planning on getting salt jewels, which obviously meant I was gonna need to go get salt. Day 114, I realized that my collection of creatures was not that impressive. That's pretty sad, but it's just how it goes. And I also went on top of the log to get Thor's Pendant, which is just an overall buff to everything that you have. I killed an infected wolf spider and crafted my salty globs. And I also killed the broodmother once again. And it was a pretty easy fight, so it wasn't that bad. I needed the broodmother chunk so I could craft the mantis kebab. The mantis kebab is how you spawn in the mantis boss. I went down to the fire ant hill and absolutely squad wiped all the ants. I got a mega milk molar, a normal milk molar, and a bunch of quartzite. I kept making more salt globs and I was eventually able to upgrade the club of the other demon to salty. Day 115, I went up to the mantis boss fight, doing barely any damage to the mantis and instantly dying so uh, it was pretty clear that I was not ready to fight this guy yet and when i died i got respawned all the way back at the broodmother so i decided just to reload the save and just make it a lot quicker day 116 was very boring all i did was defend my base from orb weepers and that's uh that's about it day 117 i went down to this little larva pit apparently the larvae have a new thing and uh, i absolutely hate the ladybird larva the mosquitoes are still the worst but this is probably a close second i tried to evade as many larvae as i possibly could i got some quartzite as well as a milk molar and i also went for some scarabs i made sure i scanned them and i tried to take out as many as i could it was very hard though because they are very quick um so fortunately i was able to take out one but the other one escaped day 118 all i did was get repair glue so uh that was that day 119 i started off by trying to kill a scarab but unfortunately he burrowed into the ground so uh yeah i was out of luck i got another milk molar and as i spoke to burgle i got this little battery thing that i could put in the scab the scab is up at the chair by the shed so uh it's not super hard to find and since i put the battery in the scab i was now able to unlock the shed if you go underneath the shed, there's this little lab thing where you're able to open up the door. And it reveals everything underneath the shed. And I also spent my milk molars. The whole reason I came here was to find the rest of the scarabs. So on day 120, I went down this tube underneath the shed here, and there were a bunch of scarabs. And I also started creating salty jewels. This was the whole reason why I was getting so many scarabs. And on day 121, I finally had a fully maxed out salty club. And I decided to fight a black widow spider. This is one of the new bosses they added. There are four locations of black widow spiders, and they are all in the new areas. And, uh, yeah, I cheated, of course. I mean, how else am I gonna do it? I killed him with the staff, and I got a black widow fang. And the last thing I did was spend some milk bowlers and scam my spider thing. And the next day, I went over to attack another Black Widow spider. I went to a new location, but um, somehow he just disappeared. Uh, so I was gonna need to wait, I think, 14 days it is until this guy was gonna respawn again. But I did go into his den and get an extra milk molar, so I guess that wasn't too bad. Day 123, I got a bunch of beefy smoothies because I was now gonna fight the Mantis boss. I spawned in the Mantis boss, and I also made sure to peep him just because I was gonna need to either way. I tried to get as many hits in with the club as I possibly could off rip. And since my club was salty, it was gonna do extra damage because the Mantis only has one weakness, which is salt. I got very close to the end of the fight, but, uh, unfortunately, I did choke up at the end there. He hit me with this double attack that was just stupid but uh yeah i just had to reload i know it might sound cheesy to reload but i didn't want to get the smoothies again i had to get all the materials for it and have to wait for the muscle sprouts to grow again so i just didn't feel like doing that i'm sorry but uh yeah i just it was it was just a waste of time to do that I then reloaded the Mantis fight and tried again here, and I didn't realize something, but he actually is not able to do any damage right when he drops down. 
So that's a perfect window for you to do as much damage as you possibly can in that short period. This time I played it a lot safer by going around the tree instead of just instantly trying to attack him every time I saw him. And I made sure I used a bunch of my smoothies. By the end of it, I was pretty much down to almost no smoothies left. And with a shot of my crossbow, I finally finished him off. The next day I scanned all his parts and was now able to unlock the assassin chestplate. After crafting the chest plate, I made sure I upgraded it, and I upgraded it to the sleek variant instead of the bulky variant. The sleek variant is basically just faster, and I also learned that the bulky variant doesn't do that much for you. The bulky variant doesn't have a whole lot more resistance, so it's just better to go with the sleek route almost all the time. And now with the completed greaves and chest plate, my character was looking really cool. The only thing I was missing was the mask, which of course I was going to need a level 3 dagger for. So once again, I tried to kill another Black Widow, which was pretty successful. I was able to take him out. Of course, I cheesed him, but it's the game's fault, alright? It's not my fault. The kid... The Black Widow got stuck in this little hole area where his den is, so it's not my fault. I got two fangs from it, and I also reloaded it again to see if I would get the super venom that I needed. And, uh, of course, he doesn't drop it. Day 125, I was just paused on the loading screen and took out a couple mites, so that wasn't a very productive day. Day 126, I was looking at my creature cards, and I was slowly but surely getting there. And the rest of the day, I had this little extension to my base. This is where I'd move my armor stands, and I had to get spiky burr and lint for the floor. On day 127, I finally finished off the floor. I moved all my armor stands in there, and it was looking really nice. All I needed to do was finish off the roof, add a couple pillars, and, uh, yeah, I thought it looked really cool. On day 128 to 130, I spent the entire time making a whole new room. This was gonna be a full-sized room. It wasn't just gonna be an extension. It was gonna be, like, pretty much a copy of what I already had, but just a little bit different. And eventually, I got it done, and this was gonna be mainly my storage room or just a room for like things I need so like oven chest stuff like that and so instead of stuff like the armor stands and all that this was going to be mainly just a crafting room next I went out to kill a bombardier beetle I was going to need this to make even more ovens and I also fell into this little spider den by the haze area um I found this like skeleton thing I don't know what this is supposed to be but um yeah I just thought I would share that this time I went back to the cold town I was going to try my best to reclaim it but um yeah I I died <laughs> Even with the antlion armor, I still died. The sizzling does so much damage. So I was gonna need to wait a little bit longer. Day 132, I went to the termite hill. The reason why I did this is so I can get termite parts, and termite parts are one of the easiest ways to get repair glue. Since there's a bunch of termites in one spot, it's just very easy to get as many parts as you need. It's only four for one piece of repair glue, so um, I think that's pretty good. Once again, I checked my creature cards, and eventually it was getting up there, and the last thing I did was kill another bombardier beetle. For day 133, I completely forgot to record, so this is all I have. Day 134, I got more lint rope, and slowly but surely, I would replace the wood stem floors with burr ones. Next, I would go take out another Black Widow, and this time, I got very lucky getting three Super Venom. I need four for the dagger, so I just needed one more. And of course, that same day, I took out another Black Widow. For some reason, he was just stuck in the middle, so I just, uh... And with the crossbow, and I got the last super venom that I needed. I scanned the super venom, and I now was able to craft the dagger. The only thing I needed was lint rope, which was super easy. I went underneath the shed, got all the lint that I could, and came back. And on day 135, I finally had the dagger. Then I went to go get pond moss, which is required for the mask. I tried to collect as much as I could by the time I came back, and uh, yeah, I was ready. I crafted the mask, and I had a full set of assassin armor. I defended my base against orb weavers, which was not that hard. I just had to repair some of my stuff while I was doing it. And I also fully maxed out my mask to the sleek level. Now the full set was all level 9. I then crafted the sour staff, expecting it to be even better than the spicy staff, but uh, it was horrible. The projectile velocity is super slow, even though it says it has the same speed, that's not actually what it's talking about. It's talking about how fast it'll shoot out the projectile, not actually how fast the actual projectile is. Uh, so overall, don't get this. It's not good. Only get the spicy staff, that's the only good one. Next, I peeped the Orb Weaver Jr. For some reason, I have not peeped this yet, um, which is kind of surprising. I've seen so many of them, but uh, I guess I just now peeped them. I also peeped the Fire Ant Soldier later that day and Moth. I could be wrong on this, but I think the moth has four locations in total. One's on top of the stump, one's on top of the log, one's on top of the wheelbarrow, I think. And I'm not sure where the other one is, but uh, I think he has four locations. Day 137, I finally upgraded my dagger, and I was now ready to use that as my main. I recommend going to the stump to get pond moss instead of the castle. It's just way easier with a lot less enemies. Before I made it my main loadout, I was going to need a special build for it. It's Widow Leggings as well as the Widow Shoulder Piece with the Sleek variant, and it does a ton of damage. The only problem was I was going to need to kill the Broodmother again because I was going to need the Broodmother Mask again. But since the mask I already have is bulky, I was going to need it sleep. So that meant obviously I was going to need to go fight the Broodmother again. I pretty quickly killed the Broodmother and got back to my base. And I upgraded my mask to the Sleek variant instead of the bulky. And eventually I had the full loadout, and this thing was absolutely broken. 
I am not speeding this footage up at all. It just does this much damage. And just to show you guys how much damage it does, this is not sped up at all. This is just how fast you're able to kill the Broodmother with it. It is easily one of the most broken loadouts in this game. So I have to thank this guy, Sir Sim, a lot for this loadout. Um, this just is absolutely broken. So go check out his channel. It'll be in the description. Um, so yeah, thank you for the loadout. Day 139, I killed the Scarab. And I also got a trinket as well as the intern badge. This intern badge is absolutely insane. It allows you to carry 15 logs. And I also learned about the pupa hat. The pupa hat allows you to carry five extra things so that is going to be 21 in total it'll be 21 if you use the ant shoulder piece the next thing i would do is work on a zip line that connected from my house all the way to the new areas it didn't even take a full day to complete it just because how fast it is when you have 21 things you can carry and the next thing i did was create another tower even though i actually didn't need to so basically i just wasted at least two days worth of making this tower by the oak tree even though i could have just connected it to the one i already had but the thing is i didn't know that that would happen i thought it would be behind the oak tree so i wasn't able to connect it but uh fortunately this is even better which means it'll be even faster to go to where i need to go and day 144 i made more silk rope so i was able to connect the zip lines and from the rest of day 144 to 46 i spent the entire time making mushroom bricks around my zip lines this would just be so i could protect them better and if they get hit by something they have a better chance of surviving because i am still traumatized from the time that the zipline fell down and I had to redo it so uh, I really want to make sure it doesn't happen this time day 147 I got more lint and spiky burr this was used to replace the stem floor I already had I next made a bunch of beefy smoothies because I was gonna fight a boss one thing I had to do is go underneath the shed and run past the black widow spider there was this lab where I need to activate this lever and I jumped down in this little crack and I was now in the man boss fight with the loadout I had, it was extremely easy. It was not hard at all. You're not really able to hide in this fight since there's no cover, so you kind of just got to go all out and just constantly attack him. And I would eventually get him out. After the boss fight, it led me to Dr. Wendell Tully, which is, uh, I'm going to be honest, he's kind of an op, all right? He's kind of an op. He's a floating head, um, but he was very surprised when I beat the man, so I think he's kind of an op, so I got I to gotta watch out for him. He told me to get this grilled science, which is required for the final part of the game. And I also got two extra milk molars underneath the shed. I got two new ones from killing the man and also talking to Dr. Whittle Tully. And by this point, I was getting pretty close to getting all the achievements in the game. Day 150, I got a koi fish scale and I was now able to craft the embiggening cocktail. And I also activated a mixer. Now, I'm not talking about the dead streaming platform. I'm talking... <laughs> okay, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> Anyways, you have to defend this thing and there's a bunch of bugs that come at it. So it was pretty easy with the dagger, but uh, yeah, uh... What a, dude, what's wrong with me? And it's actually pretty nice because you get 2,000 raw science from it. And also, it's an achievement to get all the mixers done in the game. I also peeped a sickly roly-poly, which I didn't know what they were, but apparently it's just a sick roly-poly that's by the trash and also a meaty gnat. And by this point, I was getting super close to being able to peep all the creatures. Day 151, I was going to build up to the castle, but first I was going to need more sap. And eventually, by the end of the night, I was able to build all the way up and flew in on the dandelion. I went on the stairs a little bit and hit this little button with my hammer. There's a secret lab beneath the castle and this dude with the head floating thing, um... He told me, yo, you ready to go? And I'm, I'm always ready, so I just decided to wing it. Uh, I wasn't really sure what was going to happen, but I, I just went for it. And uh, I got greeted with a boss fight. This boss fight uh, kind of freaked me out, and it is easily the hardest boss fight in the game. Uh, it's just There's just so much happening. Lasers everywhere, sh shooting these electric beam things. It's ridiculous, but somehow I was able to win the fight and peep every single creature. After killing the boss, it allowed me to craft the Sour Battle Axe, but more importantly, I was able to craft Supreme Stones. Before these Supreme Stones were limited, now you can craft as many as you want. And with that, I got two achievements, which was Gotta Peep Them All, which is getting all the creatures peeped, which only 0.1% of people had. And also 0.3% of people killed the director. So next, I tried to kill as many Black Ox Beetles as I possibly could. This is how you're going to be able to craft the Supreme Stones. Day 152, I crafted the Sour Battle Axe, and it was alright. It wasn't incredible, but I tried it against an Infected Wolf Spider, and it was not too bad but it was just something like insane. So it wasn't bad, but it just didn't compare to all the other stuff I had. And from the rest of day 152 to 153, I was just killing Black Ox Beetles. I was also crafting up as many Mighty Globs as I possibly could. I then upgraded the Sour Battle Axe just to give it a chance to see how good it would be. And I also had to kill some Scarabs because I was going to need some more jewels. The next day I tried to defend a Mixer, but uh, it was very tough. It was mainly because of the Mosquitoes and uh, yeah, I was just not ready for it. And later that day I took out even more Scarabs. I started day 155 by killing an Ox Beetle and crafting as many Supreme whetstones as I could. I would then turn those into mighty jewels. Day 156, I killed a scarab, and I also went down to this little termite hill thing that they added, and it had a mega milk floor in there. The reason why I wanted so many scarab parts is I wanted 10 mighty jewels. And finally, I fully maxed out my dagger. I then went to the mixer by the orb weaver hedge area, and it was pretty easy. The only reason it took damage is because they spawned behind me, so that was kind of unfair, but 
Uh, yeah, if I, especially if you use the dagger, it's super easy, and I eventually got the mixer done, which obviously rewards me with the 2,000 science. Next, I climbed up this vine by the edge of the map, and I went to this bubble gum, which has a key in it. This key unlocks a chest that's underwater that gives you two milk molars. I also went to the Black Widow den to get some more Supreme Quartzite. The only thing I did on day 158 was add more mushroom walls to the zip lines. Day 159, I had to move this ball thing around underneath the ground. It was one of the most annoying things. It took about five minutes to get to this milk molar, but I eventually finally got to it. You have to jump up, and it's super hard. I messed it up so many times, but eventually I would get it. And I also got this milk molar that was up in the tree. And for the rest of the day, I would try to build up a ramp all the way up on top of the wheelbarrow. This would go all the way up until the next day. And the reason I did this is because there's another milk molar. I accidentally dropped a couple mushroom slurries on the ground. Just I was just going to try to get rid of it, and I made a pet. Or I didn't make the pet. I made the pet. My pet. That made sense. Anyways, it was a weevil, and um, I had to rename him again. So, of course, carrying on the tradition, it was going to be Joe Biden 2.0. To heed the timeless advice from Teddy Roosevelt, speak softly and carry a big stick. End of quote. I promise you, the president has a big stick. Huh? Day 161, I had to go back to the chest to get this recipe that I missed. This would allow me to craft bomb arrows. And the reason why I needed this, because I needed to shoot this rock. After shooting the rock, it allowed me to get the last regular milk molar that I needed. And with that, it was fully maxed out. Now, the only milk molars that were left were the mega ones. Then by night, I got another milk molar. I built up a little ramp and I upgraded my max arrows. The next day, I got two mega milk molars. And on day 163, I was able to go down to this pipe and get another milk. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and on day 160 <laughs> okay no stop okay anyways i got a milk molar in that pipe in the depths of the pond there was a key and this also opens a chest to a mega milk molar and inside the chest there's a chip i can return to burgle and after turning in the chip it allowed me to get better fin flops it just allows me to go even faster underwater and from day 163 to 164 i spent the entire time killing as many ox beetles as i could on day 165 i went up by this flower pot that was on the porch and i got a mega milk molar there and i continued my ramp on top of the wheelbarrow i just had to go up the handle here and there's a mega milk molar as well as a field station day 166 i went up on top of the log here and i found a moth that was sleeping and he's making this goofy noise anyways uh there was a mega milk molar up here so i got that i then went down to the fire ant hill and there's this cracked rock which behind it is a mega milk molar i then went down to the depths of the pond and there was a mega milk molar that was hiding on the side and i had to use my dagger to break the vines the next day i crafted a bomb arrow and went back to the fire ant hill and i got the mega milk molar there I also went on top of the stump and got a mega milk molar there. Day 168, I got another mega milk molar, which was underneath the shed. And I spent the rest of the day trying to look for mega milk molars. I was missing one more, and I looked all around the map, and this included day 169. And later that day, I went back to the Black Ant Hill, and the last mega milk molar that I needed was behind this cracked rock. So I got some gunpowder, I crafted a bomb arrow, and blew up the cracked rock. Unfortunately, it was only raw science behind it, and there was another rock that I needed to get behind it. So this meant, once again, I was gonna need to go make another bomb arrow. So I eventually came back, I shot the rock and I finally got the last mega milk molar that I needed and with that I fully maxed it out day 171 This is all I had it was just me sleeping. Uh, so that's it and on day 172 I killed a black ox beetle So that was about that and on day 173 I completely forgot to record so there is absolutely no footage on day 174 I was working on building a new room for my base and this would go until day 176 day 177 I made sure to max out my antlion armor because this time I was finally gonna go get the coltana I got the mint mace because the ladybird larva are weak to mint. I was not playing defensive enough at all i was basically just winging it and i of course died to sizzling but this time i only attacked with the mace when i needed to but i tried to use my crossbow as much as i could and after a little bit i finally had the recipe for the coltana once i got back the next day i was working on the roof and i also crafted the coltana the coltana is now my favorite weapon in this game it is easily the coolest looking weapon in this game and it is extremely strong so i made sure i also got a bunch of whetstone because i was going to need to upgrade this thing Coltan is doing an insane amount of damage to ticks and spiders. Day 181, I collected muscle sprouts, and I used this to craft beefy smoothies. Day 182 to 83, I spent the entire time trying to defend these little cable things. These things with raw science in the middle is the thing I was going to need to defend for the final part of the game. So I was going to need to spend a couple days making a really good foundation for this thing. So I was just getting a bunch of mushroom brickets surrounding the three cables. With my black ox parts, I made more supreme whetstone. Kill the scarab, and also just killed even more black ox beetles. I was doing this just because I wanted to upgrade my coltana. Day 190, I defended a mixer. It was by the haze area and it was pretty easy the only reason i took some damage is because it shot projectiles at me but otherwise i was pretty good and i used the dagger i then retried this same mixer again and uh yeah i didn't even get halfway through and i lost day 191 i made even more smoothies for the last fight and i was also working on my fourth and final room for my base and this would go all the way until day 195 
I finished off my roof and my base was complete. I thought it was looking insane. Maybe it's just because it's my base and I have a bias, but I, I think it looks actually really good. I forgot to record for day 196, and on 197, I was now ready to finish the game. I shot a bomb arrow at this glass, which would break it, which would allow me to put the embiggening cocktail in. I deposited all the materials at the top of the coffee maker, and I was now ready to start the fight. With insufficient power, I had to go repair the mixer modules, and I spoke to Dr. Wendell Tully that I was now ready, and the fight would begin. For some reason, right away, B was already at half health, so uh, that already kind of sucked, but um, I would be alright. And I fought throughout the entire night trying to defend my base. I also got some help from Dr. Wendell Tully, which I mean by some is probably none. Actually, it does more harm to me, because he kept hitting me, doing damage to me. So, uh... You know, he wasn't doing much for me. It was getting kind of scary, though. They were breaking through the wall to the final layer. I killed the last Bombardier Beetle, and I was successful in defending it. Damage! Excellent. Cell integrity appears nominal. Day 198 and 199, I pretty much just sat around doing nothing. There was nothing else for me to do. I already completed the game. I was basically just waiting for day 200. Day 200, I went back to where I started. I put the new embiggening cell into the spacer, and I talked to Dr. Wendell Tully for the last time. I was then ready to go back, and uh, yeah, I pressed the button and returned to normal size. And with a flash, that was the end of the tiny adventure of a lifetime. At least that's what the local papers call it. It's hard to believe how much has happened since then. There were reporters, investigators, even the FBI got involved. They tried to keep a lid on all of it, but the whole story came out about the kidnappings, about the dead teenagers, about Armin. Turns out, everyone did learn the name of director Dalton Schmachter, just like he always wanted. But when the dust settled, the weirdest thing happened. People learned the truth about the shrinking technology and about me. It felt good to get the recognition that I had always wanted for all my life. Pete, Willow, Max, and Hoops tried to go back to being normal teenagers. Burgle has joined the kids' new science and robotics club. He's the mascot, you can tell him. I'm expecting big things from all of you. Life's getting back to normal around here. It's funny that the world can still seem so small. And no, I haven't come up with my next big invention. And I don't mind one bit either. Because when it comes down to it, all that really matters is that we make the most of the time that we have together. <laughs> and with that, I finished off the game. It says I have 198 days, so I think I messed up twice in the recording, but it, it's whatever. It's 200, okay? Ending with an A rank. I don't, I'm not really sure how. In what world? 83% is an A, but uh, I'll take it. And just the hint was that I needed to get more mixers, which obviously that was true. Um, there was so many mixers that I missed, but it's fine. The game was over, and it just finished off with thanks for playing. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. These videos take around 200 hours to make, so if you enjoy it, make sure you like and subscribe. I might be making 100 days, but on a different game. For right now, there's not a reason to return back to Grounded because I already completed everything. But maybe in the future when they add even more updates, I might come back. And with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.